I'm required to hand you over to the Child Protective Services. You're the state's problem now. No! Do you just take those DVDs with you everywhere you go? Linus walked around with a blanket. No one gave him shit for it. So you whores must think I'm playing. Back at it, man. Part two in the tuck. Or I break a lot of promises. I know that. But this ain't one of them. This is every peanut special reviewed part two. Four specials at a time, one video a month, all in order, all unrelated hip hop songs, Ellis Slang talk. We going crazy. All right, everybody, move it along. Well, maybe if you weren't so busy being sad, this could have been out on time. This was supposed to come out two weeks ago. Hell, don't fuck you, sad. Oh you my god, no, you're not. You come in, you can tell me, and I'm sad. Nigga, I know I'm sad. Nigga, just watch the video. You need to get on my last nerve. I'll make all these videos for y'all. Y'all just talk to me any kind of way. Watch the damn video. <laughs> I'm so sad. This ain't televised. They telling lies. We promise I won't. We've been patronized. They taking lives. I'm on my way home. Relax my mind about half the time. I'm watching cartoons. Four knocks how I'm rocking my home. Of course, they resemble my skin when I watch two. Hypnotizing, Titanic, how I follow through the vibes. Okay. Dreaming mama's proud as if she looks through penny size. On a man of the house like Oscar. Slide. You deceive, I believe it, Oscar. James Earl, when I speak, I'm a fossa. Got a swerve in the streets, never block us. I go. Feel more, just try to make you feel more. Through the halls, I felt scorns. Looking at me, cause I don't like what you like. You feel torn. Should've smacked your lights, slick back. You ain't seen pimping before. For the stars, I shoot pimping. No boy, you best set the score. Sold out. I sold out. There's no two ways about it. I sold out. Today's video is actually brought to you by the service Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of different classes covering dozens of different creative topics, all taught by well-versed professionals. Premium membership gives you unlimited access, so you can join whatever classes or communities you feel like are right for you. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is honestly the best place for you to go to continue to develop whatever your craft is. There's classes on poster design, animation, writing, but if you want to be a Schroeder type and get into your music bag, I recommend Learn How to Mix Music, taught by the big homie Young Guru. Do you want your videos to sound like mine? I don't think so. <laughs> An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. We're a little short. Hell yeah. But the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will actually get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity without having to put the bag up. With Skillshare, you can find inspiration in the moment and learn how to express your creativity, bring color, beauty, and fun to your year. Just go to Skillshare.com slash Toonrific Tariq 02211. Skillshare.com slash T-O-O-N-R-I-F-I-C-T-A-R-I-Q 02211 for a premium membership free trial. Charlie Brown. Why me? Because he's your dog, Charlie Brown! I want a girl with extensions in her hair. I'll be honest, this video took a long time to start because I kind of didn't want to watch this one. He's your dog, Charlie Brown. This one has Snoopy tripping on all the kids in the neighborhood, so Charlie Brown sends him to obedience school. Son, this nigga Snoopy is actually out of control in this one. Now, I don't know what the hell's wrong with him, but somebody should call the cops. <laughs> Hey, so Charlie Brown doesn't take this nigga to school. He gives him a suitcase and tells this nigga to walk, which is something we find out later that this nigga does a lot. Charlie Brown arranges for Snoopy to stop at Peppermint Patty's crib, sort of like as a rest stop for the night, but the nigga just ends up staying there for a week. I think this is the first time they do the bit where Peppermint Patty kind of just thinks Snoopy's like a dude. Nobody has the heart to actually tell her that he's a dog and I've never understood why, but it's a lot funnier that way. Remember Snoopy, my shortstop? Sure, Chuck. You mean that funny looking kid with the big nose? Yeah, I guess he does have kind of a big nose. I feel like I'll get to this if I ever decide to relook at the Peanuts movie or anything newer that they do, but that's something lost in the newer Peanuts stuff. They kind of flip flop. I don't think they know what they want to do. Check out the news and that funny looking kid with the big nose. 
Yeah, Chuck, your crazy dog is over here again. Also, I never realized how much Peppermint Patty we get before we get any Marcy. They're so tethered together, it's hard to think about one existing without the other. Hi, Roy. <laughs> Nigga, is that Roy? Why and how did I ever forget that Roy was ever animated? I love Roy. What did they make Roy sound like? I can't wait. Snoopy gets really comfortable with Peppermint Patty's crib. This nigga eating up all the food, snapping at her to get him drinks. I don't know who Snoopy thinks he is, snapping at Peppermint Patty every five minutes. I would've broke that nigga fingers off. Hey, my nigga, that's a dog. You can't fucking say shit like that. Huh? What's just... Animal abuse. Oh, shit. He is a dog, isn't he? Damn, I forgot for a split second. Well, I guess I'm Peppermint Patty now. Comment down below which one of these is my Marcy. Now wait. I think they're trying to do something sweet here with all the kids and how much they miss Snoopy, but they don't really miss anything about him, really. They kind of just wake up one morning and realize it's quiet. Shit, ass in the hood on my set. Charlie Brown, where the fuck your dog at, my nigga? It's not as sincere as something like All Stars. It's kind of like a lesson there. This nigga Snoopy was a neighborhood terrorist. Fuck! This nigga. You a fucking menace to society, bro. This nigga a fucking menace three societies. Why does this nigga kick Schroeder? Fuck wrong with him. He want to live with Peppermint Patty. Be my guest, Beauty and the Beast like shit. Snoopy, come home. I get it. Oh, now I get it. Welcome. There's a little regression here in terms of animation. I'm not going to lie. We're back to getting a lot of really sloppy drawings. Like this shot where neither Snoopy or Charlie Brown look right. Not even for a split second. I wish you wouldn't do that. It's very embarrassing. Nigga Charlie Brown would like profile pic material and not the good kind. Oh, there's that footage again. I told y'all to get used to it. They even reused the bit where he just jumps off the doghouse, but they didn't do a good job matching up the shots. Great Pumpkin's Red Baron stuff was the most Snoopy had ever done until this point. We haven't reached the era yet where the specials kind of just become about him and they let the animation do all the storytelling, but this is the closest thing to it so far. Lots of runs of either Snoopy doing whatever with no dialogue or Peppermint Patty just kind of mouthing off to him. She does this to Roy too. She also does it to Charlie Brown, okay? So maybe that's just her thing, whatever. Welcome. Man, I don't know. So the way I normally put these videos together is I watch the special and pause and take notes throughout. It could probably take to an hour per special depending on how much I have to say. But this one man, it just, it could not hold my attention for some reason. I kept pausing it, taking notes and going off and doing something else. It took like five hours to watch this shit. Nigga fucked around and just called Veritas Joe on stream. Well, since, since you're on stream, say hey to everybody. Hey everybody. Um, my name is, uh, I, I run a channel, um, called Review Your Life. Uh, That's true. I was thinking maybe my nothing happens logic from You're In Love, Charlie Brown could apply here, but nah. Stuff definitely does happen here. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. I guess it's just not very funny aside from a quick gag here and there. Like, I think him kicking shorter was the only thing that made me laugh out loud. And that's in like the first 30 seconds. Is he's your dog, Charlie Brown, bad? Nah, I wouldn't say that. But I do think it's kind of boring. There's no interesting character stuff. There's no funny moments. There's not even much great character acting that I caught. Oh wait, actually, I lied. I wrote this in my notes right before I got to this scene at the end. Hey, gave this nigga five a voice, what the fuck? It's just kind of straightforward. I was wondering why I was putting off watching this one so much. I thought it was just my depression, when really it was my soul telling me that I'd be bored. And also my depression, both of them. I surrender. Oh well, it was a short summer, Charlie Brown.
Wanna know something about me? I actually hate when cartoons go to camp. I can't stand those episodes. Brace face, ginger, proud, am drag, <laughs> all mid episodes. So I wasn't looking forward to my rewatch of It Was a Short Summer Charlie Brown either. The special starts with the beginning of the school year, right after summer. Sally and Linus might actually be the perfect match. They both reuse the same joke. Come on, Sally. It's time to go to school. Not for me. What do you mean, not for you? I went yesterday. Get up, Linus. It's time to go to school. Again? What do you mean again? I went yesterday. They're already playing fast and loose with the continuity in this. In You're in Love, Sally's graduating kindergarten, and in this, she's starting it. Only reason I have that committed to memory is because I haven't stopped thinking about how pissed Charlie Brown was since that video dropped. Kindergarten. Cap and gown. Graduation. I can't stand it! Life's gotta be pretty boring if this is the type of shit that's on my mind on the regular. Poor Sally is so nervous that if someone mentioned kindergarten, I'd bet she'd jump 30 feet in the air. Kindergarten. Hmm, only 10 feet. I knew you were exaggerating. May I say something, ma'am? You seem to forget that you haven't given us any assignments yet. Oh, you one of them niggas, huh? So, because of Linus, the teacher assigns them to write a 500-word paper about their summer. So, the entire special was told through flashbacks, sort of as them trying to remember and write what they did. So fam, I don't know who the hell Lucy thinks she is, but she signed everyone up for summer camp. Not even just Linus. Camp, everyone! There's to be no discussion and no need to thank me. I feel like I've been drafted. <laughs> oh shit! When they pull up, this quickly becomes one of those lame ass boys versus girls summer camp stories. I'm sure this wasn't played out back then, but with my 2021 brain, I am exhausted. Not even Peppermint Patty can save me from this. Boy, I like summer camp. It's the next best thing to being in the infantry. The what? The boys are on Charlie Brown's side, so of course they suck at everything. And the special's just kind of like them taking constant L's, the girls rubbing it in, whatever. You know the drill. Hey, managers! Are you the boys' champion? You better! How are they yelling the exact same thing at the same time? Hey, so we're Tariq, Tariq. Tariq. have well, you next cried yet today? Out. How about oh, your DMs? How your inbox looking? Oh, damn, all dudes? That's, why that's you crazy. Don't have Couldn't be me, though. Why is it that your every time I come on this channel, there's an overwhelming aroma of bitches I'm sorry, but do you really think you're not Explain yourself. Now, give me a kiss, baby girl. Come here, bro. This one actually has the Snoopy Lucy arm wrestle stuff. It's some of my favorite character acting in the entire franchise. Look at how distraught Lucy is here, it's brilliant. I'm actually pretty positive that this was Bill Little John animating again. They gave him a lot of the big moments in these specials. If you watch enough of these or hear me point out his work enough, you'll probably be able to identify a specific loose style. Yeah, this one has a different Lucy voice too, but I guess I didn't notice it because it's the one that I'm used to from a boy named Charlie Brown. I kind of just thought the actress was getting older, but nah, I didn't even notice until the next special. Sure, Charlie Brown, we need a director. You need involvement. I've signed everyone up for summer camp. Every once in a while, these specials will have a set of dialogue that I just think is really bizarre. A good example is that bit where they tell Charlie Brown that it's only the beginning in A Boy Named Charlie Brown. Why, you blockhead? This is just the beginning. Of course, Charlie Brown. This is only the beginning. Sure, Charlie Brown. This is only the beginning. Yeah, so here, they do this. Hi, Charlie Brown. Hi, Sally. Hi, Charlie Brown. Hi, Sally. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Linus. What's with Sally? Still no adults in these, but this is the first time we see an older kid. Oh, we got the strap! We got the strap! You set me up, motherfucker! No! Son, I wasn't even gonna write about her, but she just like keeps showing up. Who the hell is she? Why is she all up in Linus' face? What's she trying to beat? Yo, look at look at Linus. Nigga said, <laughs> yeah. And there's so much Shermie in this one. This nigga won't shut the fuck up. Hey! There's a spider on that log! Yeah, 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 yeah. Shut up, nigga! Nobody knows who you are! Man, I don't know. It was a short summer Charlie Brown, 
is definitely better than He's Your Dog. It's definitely more entertaining, but it's not by a country mile or anything. There's some Roy, there's some funny bits. It trips me up by having Peppermint Patty and Patty standing right next to each other like the universe won't fucking explode, but it's not really anything special. Come on, man, let Roy talk, y'all. I'm sure Buddy got a lot to say. Oh, well, it was a short summer, Charlie Brown. And it looks like it's going to be a long winter. Did, did I win the poll? Am I Marcy? Yes. Schroeder, do you think I'm beautiful? I think... You're the most beautiful girl the world has ever known. You hate me, don't you? Hey, right on, man. You already know it's Ali Rock. I want to give a big shout out to my brother, Reek. For let me be a part of this intro song. Yo, I love you. You're one of the uh, best brothers that I've ever had, brother. And you know that I support you. You're watching your videos back to back on this side. Once again, I'm Ali Rocket. My new tape, Apollo Boy, is out right now. It is streaming everywhere. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for everybody that has supported me. Shout out to my cadets. Shout out to everybody that supports my brother, Reek. Keep watching, keep watching, keep subscribing, keep liking. And um, I hope everybody does enjoy the intro song. We work really hard on it. So um, shout out to Reek again, brother. You know I love you, man. Guys, just forever. If Kanye let me get away with using his song, he pussy. Starting off the 70s, we have Play It Again, Charlie Brown. We finally got one that I've actually never seen before. It's kind of like All Stars at first. The first half is just kind of bits between Lucy and Schroeder. Just her being in love with him and him dubbing her. I'll bet I know something you don't know. What's that? Beethoven now comes in spray cans. You kind of think that it's going to turn into a character piece on a frustration and they kind of lean into that direction but then it takes a turn when Lucy decides to try to do something nice for him to get his attention. So she hits up Peppermint Patty and through her she sets up for Schroeder to perform piano in front of the PTA. This looks like the first time I've seen them use that Charlie Brown yell for someone that's not Charlie Brown. Ah! They'll keep doing this too, this thing stuck around for years. I think they even gave it to Lucy once. This was the first actor change that I noticed too, it was Schroeder. Apparently this was the first and only time he's played by this actor. I'm just gonna put this name on screen, I'm not even gonna try. Charlie Brown's new too. And Linus. They kinda swapped a lot of these, huh? Networks like animation cause they don't have to pay the actor's squad. Plus they can replace him and no one can tell the diddly difference. The cinematography for this one is hilarious because half of it is just Schroeder and Lucy at the piano. Looks like somebody's not getting a lot of clips in the AMV. <laughs> He said thank you! Somehow I never quite know what's going on. <laughs> Same, my nigga shit. I don't get this spray can thing though. I thought it was just a one-off gag, but it turns out to be the resolution of the whole damn plot. Ladies, ladies, the meeting of the Coffee Lane School PTA will please come to order. PTA programs also come in spray cans. I like this one a lot actually. Play it again, Charlie Brown is really simple. But it's a good time. There's some interesting stuff that goes on in the third act. It starts to become about the concept of artistic integrity. Not changing who you are or what you do for the sake of not just the bag, but your friends. There comes a time when we have to take a stand. A person just has to do the things he believes in. I'm sorry, Patricia. <laughs> this nigga said Patricia? What the fuck? Because the PTA wants Schroeder to perform, but he can't do Beethoven. He's got to do rock and roll, which clearly isn't his body. Ugh. There's even a nice bit where this upsets Lucy because she knows it'll break his heart. I'm afraid old Beethoven won't fit the program. What? But that's impossible! 
You see, Beethoven is his hero and... I mean, like, Schroeder weighs all of his options. He realizes what him not performing would mean for how his friends look at him, but he doubles down. If that's the way they feel, just tell them to forget it. Forget it? Ah! Ah! That's what I admire about Peanuts. They go for the bold statement instead of just the thing that your emotions want. It reminds me of the Christmas special, right? How even though the deadline was tight and they didn't have much time for anything, they still did what they wanted. There's no laugh track. They left the Bible stuff in. They did all of this stuff. And even if they didn't like what they produced, they could at least stand back, look, and realize it was theirs. That's what Schroeder is doing here. Like, yeah, my friends want me to do this, but my heart needs me to do this. They may not understand they don't have to, but I do. It's selfish, but sometimes you have to be. Sometimes it's worth it. If you're gonna hang around here, you've gotta like Beethoven. All right, but I'll just have a small glass. You blew it, kid. You'll never be elected, Charlie Brown. Let's go! One of my favorites. You're not elected, Charlie Brown. They didn't stretch for that title at all. Shut up. This is definitely the best looking special so far. I was waiting for this. The peanut specials of the 70s are a nice little middle ground. They're on model, but there's still a lot of exaggeration. The human touch is still there, but the drawings don't get crazy wonky. It's kind of like the comics in the 70s too. That's why that's my favorite era of those. I would never say that the peanut strip got trash, but the super on model stuff of the 90s never really sat well with me. As for the specials back then, let's just say that we got a lot of stuff to get to. <laughs> hey, it's the first appearance of Joe Cool, son. Sniggle like Barrett is Joe. As far as I can tell, this is the first we see Woodstock too in these TV specials. Not counting great value Woodstock from It Was a Short Summer. So let's back it up a bit. This one is actually about Linus running for class president and Lucy and everyone else trying to help him run the campaign. The only reason the special gets his name is in the 30 second gag where Lucy asks everybody if they want Charlie Brown to be president and they all say, yeah, nah. Man, buddy can't catch a break. Hold your head up, G. I have the results of my poll. You'll never be elected, Charlie Brown. This one is super funny, my nigga. I love it so much, even after not seeing it for years. There's some great stuff in the opening about Sally not being able to open her locker. Okay, Sally, about your locker. Do you know the combination? Of course I know the combination. I had one once that I had to hit on the bottom before it would open. Mine won't open because I can't reach it, that's why. They do all the stuff that a candidate would do, but they do a nice job adapting it to a school setting. They do the poll stuff, the marketing stuff, this little press run thing. Little Linus is on the radio, it's hilarious. Ask questions of candidates. I don't know how, how you can vote for somebody, and I'm glad that I have a chance yeah. to ask this question. And I hope you don't mind, because I thought about this question, and I think it's a good to be able to ask questions of a candidate. I have a question for you. Yes, what? What is your question? What? What did you say? What is your question? Question? Oh my gosh, I forgot what the question is. Ah! He does the pandering, the obvious promises that he can't keep, it's great. This nigga in here talking about like infiltrating the dealer and finding the supplier, nigga this is like elementary school class president boy if you don't promise me more cookies at lunch what the fuck what the fuck you trying to abolish the system for you're exaggerating only a little bit that's the messed up thing my administration will bring down the false idols in high places i wonder why the principal looks so pale i don't know much about politics my nigga i just think a lot of this shit is funny he's so I can't put up a picture of who this reminds me of, I'll get in trouble. So what they do here is really interesting, it's one of my favorite instances of subtext in any of these specials. As the special goes on, we realize that Linus has this in the bag, so he gets comfortable and starts to feel himself. By the time it's time for his last speech, it's lit. 
Lucy all kicking her feet up and shit. The candidate whose name I would like to place before the electorate possesses the same unique combination of qualities as those possessed by Beethoven, the greatest of all composers. That wonderful pianist. Pause. What the fuck? And that tower of strength. <laughs> but then... Then he does this. Rather than campaign talk, I decided to say a few words about the great pumpkin. Ah! So I saw this as the equivalent to a politician bringing up religion in their campaign. You already alienate a few groups when you do something like that. And it happens here. Lucy early on says this nigga has a 98% lead, but because he brings up the Great Pumpkin, these niggas are damn near tied when it's time for the final tally. And I'm not just like square pegging this religion thing, they kind of hammer it in. It's depressing to think that there are students who don't believe in the Great Pumpkin. <sighs> it kind of gives this clip from the Halloween joint some new context. There are three things I have learned never to discuss with people. Religion, politics, and the Great Pumpkin. I'm not versed enough to pick apart what this says about religion or belief, but I do think it's an interesting study on society's view on faith. Because you can say all the right things and please all the right people, but if you believe in something that niggas think is goofy, they will definitely laugh you out the room. It's pretty good. Would you do for me? If you do for me, I would do would for you. Do you. For me? If you do for me, I would do for well, excuse you. Me. What's your name? Kid Curly Brown. Hey, get a load of the kid with a funny name. I can't take my piano. I won't go. You fascinate me. You know, Snoopy drives me crazy. I surrender! But it sure has been quiet since he left. What is it with this kid? I wonder how long he's gonna stay. Hey! If that stupid dog doesn't come home pretty soon, I'm gonna stop missing him. The real me is deep. But I'm well worth all the time it takes to understand me. In other words, to know me is to love me. Wearing tuxedos for no reason. <laughs>